Hey YouTube, it's the Tempest. A um, couple of things in this video, uh, very important things. Um, first, my friend Sarah has her YouTube channel up. Um, she's doing a video blog for basically the whole year. Um, she really is hoping um, we can get her some you know, viewers and subscribers. So please um, go watch some of her videos. Conventional Pants is her YouTube channel name. And uh, if you like it, please be sure to subscribe. Um, second thing, uh, I wasn't aware of this. I was just planning on going home this weekend. Um, and then Friday evening is our local Vanguard tournament. But um, it turns out that the stand-up challenge is that night. Uh, the stand-up challenge is Bushy Road's new tournament that they're, they're doing this year. Um, it's kind of like the regional system is in the show. It's, it's kind of silly, but um, what you do is each round it's one game uh, and then it's double elimination. So every round you play one opponent for one game and then whoever wins moves on and then after you lose two rounds you're out for the whole thing and the top two finishers get regional invites so um, very important my local Vanguard community isn't very big so I'm hoping to you know be one of the top two um, my friend Ezra is coming he's bringing his Angel Feather deck so hopefully Friday evening or Saturday morning I'll be able to get you guys a uh, Angel Feather deck profile it's very good his deck that he has um, and he's a very good player as well. Um, anyway, this is my deck that I'm planning on running. Um, I'm running one of three variants of Royal Paladins for the stand-up challenge because I was going to run Shadow Paladins, but I don't have enough perfect guards for them. Um, I might be getting an order in Friday where I'll have two perfect guards, so if I can get them by Friday, that would be great, and I'll run that deck instead. But I'm lending my um, Kagero, some Kagero stuff, some Law Keepers, and perfect guards to a friend because um, he wants to have a fighting chance at the uh, at the uh, stand-up challenge. So I'm not playing Law Keeper. I'm going to play this deck. Um, I'm just going to go through the lineup and then I'll explain everything afterwards and hopefully this video won't run too long. So, um, Starter is Wingle Brave. Right now it's Bluegle, but um, my friend Ezra has a Wingle Brave for me that I'll be using for the tournament. Um, 4, Alabaster Owl. 2, Apona. 4, uh, Silent Sage Sharon. I know, right? And then 2, Flogel. And then 4, Elaine. So that's my triggers. For Grade 1's, 2, Marin. 4 Lake Maiden, 4 Toy Poogle, and then 4 Assault for the perfect guards. Pretty simple. Grade 2's, 2 Blaster Blade, 2 Blaster Dark, um, 3 Palamedes, and 3 Akane. And then for Grade 3's, uh, 3 Alfred, 2 Palamedes, 2 Boars, and then 2 Marhaus. Alright, so I'll go over everything. Um, starting with the Grade 3 lineup. Initially, I was running four Marhas, but I decided to throw Boars in here because he's actually very important. Um, now, this deck usually uses like lots of counterblasts. I get a counterblast two for Blaster Blade, counterblast two for Akane, counterblast three for Alfred, right? So that's usually five damage right there. Boars' his ability is when he attacks, you can counterblast one and give him three thousand power. Um, and he's a grade three attacker, good on Vanguard or Rearguard. So the main reason I put him in here is because I don't have a third and fourth Palamedes. Um, so he's very good again, Vanguard or Rearguard circle. He's also more consistent because he can gain the 3,000 power anytime. He doesn't have to have two or more grade threes in place. So for some reason, he's the only grade three that you have. You can still get to hit decent columns with that. Um, and then of course the two Palamedes are obvious. Two Marhaus because I don't have anything better. I was thinking about throwing a Pen Dragon in here, but I only have one, so you know, point. Um, and now for triggers, you saw I was running two Flogel, uh, four Sharon, and then two Ape on a four Alabaster Owl. So six crit, six Stan. And this is actually a suggestion from a friend. Um, the trigger lineup, I was already running 12 crit anyway. Um, and, but with this deck, with the cross rides running around and it being really easy to block things, um, this deck basically can hit for... Um, multiple attacks like okay so let's say your opponent has Dragonic Overlord the end of the Vanguard Circle and you attack with the Palamedes column and you have like an Alfred Vanguard that column is only going to swing for um, 21 which is going to hit for 10k over his Vanguard but then Alfred is going to swing for 18 and 20 over his Vanguard for 10 but it's not a three stage column so what happens is with the critical trigger you can give critical effects to your other rear guard who hasn't attacked yet and make the three stage column um, and then if you get a stand trigger, you can stand Palamedes, give it 5,000 power. It's still a 13k attacker, which makes it an 18k column and forces your opponent to 10 guard it again. So, 6 stand triggers in this deck. Um, tested it out. It's very good. Um, I like Boars a lot in here as well. If I have the free counter blast, he's a very good attacker. Um, yeah, so great 3 lineup and, of course, trigger lineup go hand in hand. Um, 
a starting Wingle Brave. Um, I basically put him in here as a Pioneer starter. Um, what you do is you put him behind your Vanguard, um, and then turn two, you try to ride um, Blaster Dark if possible. You can ride Blaster Blade as well, but Blaster Dark is a better turn two ride if you have him. Anyway, when Wingle Brave boosts this, it, since it's your Vanguard attack, they'll likely they likely won't guard it. Um, if they do, then that then they're a bad player because that means that they think that you're running Majesty Lord, but you're really not. So you get to mind fuck them a bit, um, which is part of the reason I'm running two Dark and two Blaster Blade because I, I I would run four Blaster Blade if I had enough, but I just don't. So um, only two of each. Um, and then he's very good if you can call him out you know, turn two. It's very you can kill her, very good things, you know, boosters and stuff. But he's the problem with him is he requires counter blast too. So I like him a lot, but I just wish I could, you know, not afford to waste that many counter blasts. I wish I had a damage on Flipper, I guess is what's important. Alright, so um if you do manage to boost with uh Wingle Brave and get it he goes to your soul, you get the blaster blade. You can use him as a five K guard from your hand, or you can save him in counter blast two later to kill off an important unit that they have. Very helpful. Um if you don't get to use Wingle Brave's effect, do not bother to use it. Just don't. Just leave it behind your vanguard, and then when you ride Alfred, just leave it there. Um, the other thing you can do is when you do get his effect off, and that's why I have four Lake Maiden. Um, Lake Maiden is a good turn one ride if you're going first, because she's 7k, and then you can tap her to drop and draw. Um, gives you a plus. Um, if you, you know, if you use Wingle Brave skill mid game, you can put her behind Alfred instead because she doesn't Alfred doesn't need to get boosted. You can just use her effects and stuff. Um yeah. Everything else is actually pretty standard. Four Toy Pugo for boosting, two Marin in case I don't draw Toy Pugo. And then the grade three is Akane at three to search Toy Pugo. And then uh, Palamedes at three because again, personal preference, you can use Alfred to counter boss three and bring him out if you lose one of your grade three attackers. Um so yeah. I might take him out for Galatin or Lamarack, but I think that he's very good right now. So yeah, 14 grade ones, 10 grade twos, 9 grade threes. That works really well. Um, uh, it's a little inconsistent, but I think that. But when it gets, it does get its plays off. It, it's very good. So um, I will probably be running this deck at um, my locals um, should the uh, need present itself. Um, this is basically what I'm, what my plan is. If I find out and my, through my scouting that people are going to be using like Majesty Lord and, and stuff, I'm using this deck for sure because this deck has no problem with Majesty Lord. Because it kill, kill all their rear guards with Blaster Blade and do stuff. Um, if they're running Dragonic Overlord the end, I'm not going to play this deck. Instead, I'm going to play my other deck that I'm going to show you in the next video. Um, because that deck is far more consistent than this, and it's also better at hitting consistent columns. So um, I'm going to get right to that video. Um, so please be sure to you know look for it on my channel. Um, comment with questions and suggestions, and please be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Sorry.